Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. Today, Paul, in our five years, actually, this is our first uh, follow up. It's uh, like a 2.0 version. Ooh. Yeah, so it's talking about PRP or platelet rich plasma. Should I do it? Okay, well, like we always do, before we figure out if we should do it, we should figure out what it is. Okay. So you've probably seen this, uh, or it might have had this offered to you before. It's called PRP, a PRP injection for a variety of musculoskeletal um, conditions. So what is it? So what it is, is you have a venous blood sample taken, typically in your doctor's office. And then that blood is taken and put in a test tube, and then it's put in a centrifuge, which is a really fancy merry-go-round that goes really fast. Yeah. So fast that the heavy stuff goes to the bottom and the light stuff goes to the top. And the platelet-rich plasma is the stuff that you're gonna take and re-inject into the area of concern. Right, so it, your blood is composed, composed of plasma, which is the carrier for a bunch of different things, red cells, white cells, platelets. Multiple growth factors. Yeah, tons of stuff in your bloodstream. Uh, so they're separating out the platelet-rich part uh, with the idea that that is gonna help heal or cure certain medical conditions. Yeah, like what kind of conditions? We see it, well, because of our field, we see it mostly for things like knee arthritis, yep. um, ligamentous injuries yep. or, or inflammation. Yeah, um, tendonitis, yeah, maybe that. a torn meniscus acutely. Sometimes they're using it. I think even in some ACL reconstructions, they've been talking about using it as an augment. Yeah, so different sort of musculoskeletal disorders. Yes. Actually, I did come across a paper uh, for alopecia. Oh yeah, no, that's a big one on the internet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Baldness. Ba <laughs> so it's just like George Costanza. <laughs> like that cream that he got and put on his head that really stained. He had to wear the hat. Yeah, yeah. so so they're using it for anything. You know? Yeah, it's like Frank's hot sauce. That stuff on everything. Right, but that question ultimately, when we talk about any type of treatment, is what does the evidence say? Is there any evidence to show that it works? And and first and foremost, we want to make sure that it's safe. So let's talk about the safety side of things. Is it safe, Paul? I, th I think it's safe because it's basically, you know, uh, uh, not a foreign material to your body. I right. mean, it's left your body for a little while and been processed, minimally processed, and then injected back into your body. So there is always the risk of infection. Yep. Whenever you have an injection, uh, there's always a risk of infection. In this case, stuff has been taken out and processed, and there's a chance that it becomes contaminated with bacteria, gets injected back, and you get an infection. Rare. Very rare. Very rare. And in the studies that I was reading, when they talk about adverse events or AEs, if you're like a research looker, um, they did talk about the incidents being uh, comparable to hyaluronic acid, which is another gel injection that we inject in knees, um, but that some people do have a little bit of a flare reaction mm -hmm. afterwards, for whatever reason, even though it's your own stuff. Uh, well, that flare reaction is basically inflammation, which is one of the first you know, sign, uh, signs of healing. And that's, that's the other thing, when you think about um, blood, you think about injecting PRP back, why it kind of makes sense is because whenever you injure yourself, break a bone or a tear a muscle, tear a tendon or a you ligament, bleed. you bleed. That's the first phase of your body trying to heal things, right? Yeah. You bleed. And that's, that's not a bad thing, right? Yeah. Sometimes it becomes pathologic, but the, the first phase of healing is bleeding and there must be a reason for that, right? And so that's what people are trying to capitalize on sure. and sort of focus that and uh, concentrate it when you re-inject it back in. Okay, so our first video on this was about three years ago. Yeah. At that point, we certainly said- We were kids. We're <laughs> we didn't know what we were talking about. Movies. Then. And we said there was not a lot of, of supportive clinical evidence to justify a recommendation. Okay, yeah. so here we are three years later. Yeah. We've had a pandemic. Changed, and, <laughs> changed, changed, changed the world. Changed my car. Changed my car. Um, yeah. Haven't really changed much else. I'm no, I would old. agree. Our kids are older. Yeah. Um, what would you say the evidence says <laughs> now? I think, um, I, don't, I still don't think the evidence is definitive, okay? Like, okay. there's certain definitive studies out there, like high blood pressure is bad for you, we need to lower your blood pressure. Sure. Uh, there's definitive studies that like sunlight causes cancer. Sure. Those are things I consider like real definitive studies. Yes. I, I can't find a definitive study on the use of PRP yep. uh, that says, yeah, this is now the new gold standard for treatment. Agreed. Uh, but I think there is enough evidence out there to warrant more 
research being done to see if it works really well and to warrant its clinical use at this point. I think it's reasonable to, to, to use it clinically. Right, so, so I would agree. So in all the studies that I read, there's a bunch of things that seem to be common themes. So there are very few randomized controlled trials, which is level one type evidence where you take the new treatment, compare it to the standard treatment and see if there's a difference or an improvement. Or a placebo. Or a placebo or nothing. A placebo. And what they found is that it is often comparable to hyaluronic acid. And every now and then there's a study that might show that it shows some benefit at one year, but certainly it's not definitive. And the trouble is that so many of these studies are so different. So the amount of PRP, um, the way that it's processed, the number of injections, the volume of injection, there's so many variables that it's really hard to pool them and compare and say, well, if we take all these studies together, it shows that there's a, there's a benefit. Certainly they all did show that they have similar risk profiles, which means that it's safe but I would say there's growing evidence for its use, like you were talking about, but it, it's probably not, uh, it's not a slam dunk recommendation at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. There's growing evidence that, there, that, that it's useful, uh, but right now not definitive. Here's the million dollar question. Okay. Would you use it on yourself? I mean, not do it to yourself, but sure. would you have it done for say, knee arthritis? So that's a good question, and what I would ask you back, I'd say A, how much money do I have? Because cost is a very real issue for this, for, mm -hmm. for most people. And B, how much arthritis do I have? Mm. So I think for me, if I didn't have any enough money, I didn't have the means, and I had advanced arthritis, I think the evidence says that person is probably not worth doing it to. And that's a great point, because yeah. most of the studies were like mild to moderate arthritis, yes. not really severe arthritis, which is a lot of, a lot of the population we see. Yes. Uh, so mild to moderate arthritis, so that's a good question. And, and cost, it's not free, right? And it's not usually covered uh, I don't, I'm not sure about the coverage by, mo I would say that most insurance doesn't cover it at this point. I would agree. So it's that you're out of pocket for it. And it's probably three to four times the cost of hyaluronic acid. So some people could argue, well, if it's so much more expensive, what if I had hyaluronic acid, say every six months for a year compared yeah. to one PRP and then see yeah. at the end of 12 months. And it's hard to answer the question if you would do it on yourself, because we're not in that boat. No. We're in a, maybe a neighboring <laughs> boat, a cruise ship not far off, but yes. certainly not in that boat right now with, with that big daily pain that's interfering with work. So, And I think the other thing to recognize is that PRP does not change your arthritis. You don't end up with less arthritis. Uh, this is all about symptom control. So if you're someone that needs a knee replacement, getting PRP is not going to prevent you from needing a knee replacement. It's going to make you more comfortable while you wait, which is often what we do anyway. But I think it's critical to recognize that this is not a, a solution, it is a symptom yeah, manager. Yeah, you're right. It's not a cure. And it might be um, misleading in some of the advertisements you might agree. see where this is like a cure. It's not a cure. So what, what is the cure for arthritis? Uh, well, a total knee replacement if it's in the knee. We don't have a cure. Yeah, we, we don't have a cure. cure. Can't bring your cartilage back. No. Nope. Uh, can't reverse that. It's like aging almost. No, there's no cure for aging. Yeah. We cannot cure your arthritis, but we do replace them. That's why we replace knees, because there's no cure. Right. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're thinking, of, if you're, you're approaching this. It's like taking an aspirin or taking acetaminophen yep. or icing your knee. These are all symptom control things you do. PRP is a much more invasive symptom control, but it is a symptom control maneuver. And I think the takeaway is, I think if you have the means and the motivation, I think it's not unreasonable to try at this point. I, you, you may see us next video with no hats and a full head of hair because we right. went nuts that's right. with the PRP. That's right. I'm going to be like a chia pet. <laughs> I like it. So if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, and share your experiences with PRP in the comments if you've had one. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.